Hello world and welcome back to another episode of Batania where today we're going to be covering all the natural apparatus that's inside of the mod. One day I swear we will progress from just all the little things that are in this mod. Starting things off, we have the Cocoon of Caprice. The Cocoon of Caprice is made using seven string, one fell pumpkin, and a mana steel ingot. Now, the Cocoon of Caprice is a way of actually spawning in random mobs that are inside of the game, and most of the time they are passive. Now, I'm going to place all of these down, it takes a little bit of time, and naturally they will just start the spawns. So let's see what we get inside of here. If you leave it and actually spawn uh, some of these cocoons in water, you will actually get aquatic animals as well. Now, there is some ways that you can actually sort of tailor what you want to spawn out of them and that is by giving them some items so if we wanted to say get uh, some sort of villager we would actually have to give them an emerald so let's give this little guy an iron here i'm going to give him quite a few and we can see we get all these little sparks as well as that if we wanted to get something from the end dimension we can give them some chorus fruit now there is one more thing it says in the book you can give it some sort of otherworldly uh stuff meaning the ritual of gaia so if i try and give it gaia spirit they will give you a little bit of a uh, sort of thing there but for whatever reason for me uh i haven't had it changed to anything other than a horse or a rabbit but we'll leave these guys and eventually they will uh you know hatch now moving on we want to know how to make an actual fell pumpkin the fell pumpkin is basically an amalgamation pumpkin of everything you can kill in the game so in the center we have a regular pumpkin at the top we have a spruce string uh, on the left on the right here we have rotten flesh on the left a bone and we then get some gunpowder now but the fell pumpkin doesn't do anything by itself of course you can use it to make the cocoon but if you get a couple of sets of iron bars stack them on top of each other as if it was say uh, 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 a snow uh, golem and then we make this uh, normal here when we place this on top it will actually make ourselves a blaze <laughs> isn't that interesting and just like that it looks like things are starting to spawn we managed to get ourselves a wolf here and now we've got all of these animals all the aquatic animals are spawning now we've got managed to get a couple of fish uh what's that a little frog sort of thing a puffer fish oh look at the baby puffer fish and a little dolphin there last couple of things we've got a sheep here and a chicken as you can see it doesn't actually always work but if you do give them a uh emerald right away let's try that again it will actually turn into a villager and if we do the chorus for it again let's see what we can get so far i've managed to get a shulker from doing it this way now most of the time when you have a regular cocoon of caprice you will just get farmyard animals but sometimes you can see there you can get a wolf as well the we didn't get the wolf because we used the uh, gaia spirit next up we've got the hovering hourglass this is made using four pieces of gold two pieces of redstone two pieces of hourglass and a mana steel ingots now how this works is that it's basically a way of sending out a tick in a certain time it's a very useful way of actually having a timer so we can put three different types of things in there we can either put some sand in there red sand in there or soul sand now you can't place these one at a time you have to have a whole stack in your hand and then place it in so if we place this in here three sand equals three seconds and then it will spin out if we right click again it will take it out again uh, if we right click with the entire stack here then we'll, we'll obviously get one minute of time here but basically to know here one sand equals one second now the other things we can add of course is the red sand every red piece of sand is actually going to be 10 seconds and then every piece of soul sand is actually going to be one minute so if you put a full stack of um stuff in here soul sand you actually get 64 minutes in total now sometimes you notice that you can't actually interchange sands it can only be the one type of sand and here we go we have a couple of things that have hatched we've now got our baby villager here and we have a shulker Moving on from the hourglass, we have the open crate. The open crate is basically a simple way of having a dropper that is incredibly accurate, as you see here. This is made using seven pieces of living wood planks, and at the top here we have a hopper. It can accept proper inputs, and if we just say throw in all this sand, it will start dropping it perfectly in the center of the blocks below. Moving on from this, there is something that we have actually covered a little bit before, and that's the alchemy catalyst. This is made using two brewing stands, one mana pearl, two pieces of gold ingots, and four living rock. Now, when when you place this underneath a mana pool you will start be able to change things in the mana pool as if you're using some alchemy in the book there are many 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 recipes i believe 29 in total and each of them is going to give you varying different things obviously you can keep changing your saplings you can change certain dusts into other things and they sort of go around in a circular effect now some of these can work with other mods as well if it is configured but as you can see here there are many different things you can change the fish you can change the seeds and so on and so forth but i'll leave this to you to have a little read but essentially for it to work all we can do let's say let's get some uh, stone here 
here because that was one of them if we get ourselves some stone all we have to do is throw it in the pool as you can see here and it turns into andesite then if we have andesite we can change it to diorite diorite to then granite granite to then andesite again it will just constantly go around in circles something next that should be working with in conjunction of the hourglass is actually the animated torch the animated torch is made using redstone and a piece of mana powder and what this is basically a way of sending redstone in a sort of rotational ticking standard so you can actually have this switch directions with a burst of mana but i prefer to use it with a mana hourglass by default when you place it down it will actually flip in 180 degrees but it can actually be changed with the wand of the forest so if we get here just to demonstrate if we fire this here as you can see it's flipped 180 degrees so just to demonstrate with a little bit of redstone we can see which way it's actually going to go as you can see it's also a constant feed here so if we flip this down you can basically get that this is sort of a default t flip flop and it works very well with mana blast now if you have a uh, shift right click with the uh one of the forest you can change it to rotate all this does is means it's now going to go round in circles instead of just flipping 180 degrees the last one is random means every time it gets a mana burst it's going to flip in a completely random direction but again all four directions now this is why i like it with the mana burst here uh of the hourglass here as you can see because this is going to allow you to actually have something work now it has to be adjacent for us we're just going to do it above it and if we say we put three seconds in here every three seconds it's going to change currently we have it on random so it's going to change to something random but if we have it on rotate that is the best way i like it say you have some sort of farm going you need redstone this is a lot better way of doing some sort of timer the next item is probably one of my favorite items and that's the bot botanical brewer this is made using six pieces of living rock one rune of mana one block of mana steel and a brewing stand now placing this down it doesn't really do too much by itself and for future notice you actually do need to supply this with mana through either a mana pool mana spreader or whatever you'd like to supply it with now how this works is it's essentially a better way of making potions inside of Batania. there are three different things that you can actually sort of brew on here but the first and default thing that you're going to be using are vials vials are made using three pieces of mana glass as if you were making bottles and you'll get three of these per craft now how these work is what you have to do is similar to a brewing stand but without the interface you just have to right click it on the top here as you can see it's now there and then you have to place certain ingredients on top in this as well in order to actually make potions. Now all these different platforms that are floating around that's how many items you can actually have. So some potions can actually take up to six different ingredients but for us we're just going to do a simple one of swiftness. So we're going to put in some nether wart, we're going to put in some sugar and then some redstone and then mana will start being supplied. This will take a little bit of time. Time, but once it's done the file will actually drop off like this and then we have it in our inventory now the cool thing about files is that as you can see there it says file of fleet feet that essentially just gives you speed or swiftness or whatever and it actually has four uses so instead of you having to have four different bottles clogging up your inventory you can just use this one as you see here and now i have swiftness this is a lot better later on you can also make flasks however flask requires ingredients which we haven't currently unlocked in this stage of the game but flasks work the exact same way except i believe it gives you up to six different uses a quick look in the book here you can see that there are many different types a lot of these are just the default potions that you actually have in vanilla except obviously they're just given slightly different names since it is the modern version and as you can see up here these bigger flasks yep as you can see they give you up to six um uh, they're just basically the bigger versions now, as well as that, there are also complex bureaus. These are the ones that are going to give you uh, all the different ingredients that you need with all six platforms. I'll give you time to read each one of these in your own time, but they're obviously clearly a lot larger effects. Now, sometimes you don't always want to use a glass or a file or anything inside your area for a potion effect. That is when you are going to use incense sticks. Incense sticks are essentially a way of getting a certain potion effect. However, it's going to last a heck of a lot longer and it is works in an area of effect permanently. One of these incense sticks is made using a wood, living wood twig, a blaze powder and a gas tier and you only get one of them per craft. 
But if we take the exact same steps as before, we go back to our brewing stand, place it in here, and then let's say we'll make a swiftness one again. So if we place our nether wart, our sugar, and our redstone, it will start crafting again. Now this is gonna take a heck of a lot more mana than a simple file or flask, and you will see why in a moment when it's created. But while that's created, we're gonna need something else, and that is gonna be our incense plate. This is made using a living wood uh, block, and then two living wood slabs, as you see, and you're gonna get one. Now they are placed down just like this you can place them on the floor you can float them in the air but it looks a bit weird but you can't exactly mount them and they're always placed horizontally to whichever place you are looking but once your stuff is actually created we will uh, place that into our little plate over there There we go, it's just popped again, and now it says we have an incense six, and it's got the brew of fleet feet on it. Now, as you can see, it lasts up to 90 minutes. That is a lot larger. Now, all we have to do is place this inside of our plate here, and you can see it gets stuck there. By itself, it does nothing. In order for it to work, you are first going to have to light it. This means you are going to need a flint and steel to actually light it, and once it is actually uh, lit, we'll see we instantly get the swiftness. Now. 30 blocks away from this incense plate you will get the effect and it's going to last obviously the whole 90 minutes now the cool thing about these plates is that you can actually uh, insert sticks using a hopper and as well as that if you want to fire it with a mana blast with a certain lens on it you will actually light the stick automatically as well as that this brewing plate is going to give you a comparator output when there is a stick inside it's going to give you a signal of one and when it's lit you'll get a signal of two Moving on, something a lot less impressive is going to be the Drum of the Wild. We've already covered the Horn of the Wild in a previous episode, so I highly recommend you go check that out. And this is the Block Percussion Counterpart. Now, this is going to be made using six pieces of living wood, two pieces of leather, and the Horn of the Wild. Now, this works the exact same way as the Horn of the Wild, except that it's obviously a block, and it's going to require a mana burst. So, uh, demonstrating it, if we just have our mana block here, we'll get ourselves our mana blaster again for an example. What are you doing very loud? panda and then we shoot it here it's going to break down all the vegetation so this is something you would use for say some sort of vegetation farm some sort of auto harvesting just every now and then you may use your uh, hourglass over there to then give it um, a mana blasted pulse signal or something and then all your things will be harvested Similar to the horns counterpart of the Horn of Canopy, you have the Drum of Canopy. Made in pretty much the exact same way, but now having the Horn of Canopy, this is obviously going to remove the leaves of certain trees, or not certain trees, and all trees in the area, again, using the Mana Blasts. Now there is a good way of actually seeing how many types of mobs you have around. This is by using the Eye of the Ancients. You could use this for either your farm animals or some sort of mob farm. This is made using four pieces of living rock, four pieces of mana steel, and an Eye of Ender. When placing this down here, it won't do much by default, but what it is essentially doing is is scanning in a six block radius uh, all the way around itself to see how many mobs are around. Now this will give out a comparator signal as you can see here, and it only does it to how many mobs are around at the minimum it has to do it with two so if we get some sheep here looking at the top there is nothing to be seen we place one down then we place a second down eventually this will start putting out an output we now have a power of one because it can see two different mobs now it can only see one mob it's not powering out anything but if we keep placing loads down it will get more and more as you can see it sees five there now not sure when you really use this too often but uh, it's something pretty cool but the next little guy is something a lot more impressive this little man is the living wood avatar this is made using five pieces of living wood and and a mana diamond by himself he doesn't actually do anything you can plonk him in the world and nothing happens however you can give him certain items in Britannia such as rods so we're gonna give him here the rod of hells if we give him this he turns a little bit more powerful and then we have to just supply him with a load of mana as you can see here once he's supplied mana he will actually use this rod indefinitely until the mana runs out so it's a good way of actually getting yourselves a lot of food like this maybe if you start placing a load of those cacti or a uh, coons at the beginning have them automatically placed in this area they'll spawn and then eventually they'll burn it's a little bit morbid but that's something you could do there are many things that the avatar can do and the book actually tells you all the different things that the mana card can hold um, but this is just one of the items we won't be covering everything you can do today next up we have something a little bit op and is required for progression in the mod and that is the mana pylon this is made using one mana diamond two pieces of gold and two mana steel ingots now one of the most common ways to actually use it is with 
the enchanting table. If you place just only two of them in the same place as you would a bookcase, meaning you give it a gap, then you place it down, you'd actually be able to get a level 30 enchant right off the bat. So if we put ourselves in here in Netherite Sword, as you can see, we get level 30 enchants right off the bat than if we didn't have them in here at all. As you see, level five, we place one down, we now have level 17, and we place two down, we now have level 30. However, something else that is a lot cooler than just a simple enchant using the mana pylon and that is making one of these the mana enchanter it's quite a big craft that takes up a long area however the book does give you a visual guide on how to build things as you see here this is how you would actually end up crafting this sort of thing it gives you a description of everything you're going to need it's an 11 by 7 size you're going to need 17 pieces of obsidian any 10 mystical flowers they can be either glimmering or floating variants you'll need six mana pylons and a solid block of lapis lazuli and more sheep are burning when on this page, you just have to click this visualize here and then you'll be able to place a ghost entity in the world. Uh, I recommend just digging one hole down here and then placing it in the floor and then uh, it will actually bring up the book, of course. But now you can place these down and you'll give you a progress bar at the top of every single one you place. Obviously, I've got one built here, so we won't be showing that. And in the center here, you have obviously got your block of lapis lazuli. So if we actually just demonstrate this now and we'll break this in the center, this is our lapis lazuli block here. All we have to do is right click it with our wand of the forest and it will turn it into into the Mana Enchanter. Now I've been waffling on a little bit about the Mana Enchanter, but what does it actually do? The Mana Enchanter allows you to m enchant any tool or armor in the game with any books that are on the floor around it without actually consuming the books. Now when you do this, it is going to take a lot of mana. This is why I have so many mana spreaders here in Creative, um, but this is how it works. Now you can only place non enchanted items onto the Mana Enchanter here, and then you have to place these on the floor. Now you can enchant multiple books on here at once however um it will they won't do it in any particular order it will take the closest one it finds and then goes to the next to the next so obviously you can only enchant things onto the tool that it would usually be able to enchant so you won't be able to have uh, say knockback on a helmet but um this is how this works you can obviously just have one book if you so wanted uh but then once you've done that finished enchantment you won't be able to re-enchant this sword again so you want to do everything right off the bat right now we're going to be using mending and unbreaking so we're going to place these both on the ground and then we're going to need to get our wand of the forest again and actually initiate this charge here if we hold shift and right click it should start there we go it started there now when all these scriptures come up on the ground here uh that's when you know things are going to start now i picked up a book there so it might not give us both but we'll see after it's done now the how much mana it takes is going to be dependent on how rare your enchant is obviously mending is a lot more uh rare than unbreaking is as well as the level so unbreaking three is going to take a lot more mana than unbreaking one of course but we'll let, we'll let this run and we'll come back later once obviously uh, all the particles have stopped and we'll see a enchanted item on here we know it's finished the next item we have is the spreader turntable this is very simple and it's made using eight pieces of living wood and one sticky piston all this does is very simply here is as you can see it Actually, if you put a mana spreader on it, it's just going to simply rotate it as you would probably expect. Now, just to demonstrate how it would sort of work, if we get ourselves here a creative mana pool on top, so it actually has something to suction from, as this spins around, it's just mana blasting to all these other pools here. If we have our Wand of the Forest and have a look at our actual turntable, when we uh, right click it, it's going to increase the speed and uh, obviously then go back to its slowest speed, as you see here. If you hold shift and right click, it will change the direction and then you can actually increase the speed again. That way as well. The last natural apparatus we have is the Terra Terra Bozo. This is made using a mana weave cloth, two pieces of mana weave cloth, and a sunflower. What this is going to do is actually going to reduce the bad weather that's in the world. So obviously we've placed this down here. It's just going to start spinning in circles. You can place it anywhere. You can place it on the ground. You can hang it on the ceiling. It doesn't really matter, but it's going to detect bad weather. So if I make it here uh, rain, if I go weather rain now, what it's going to do is going to get a little bit upset and actually reduce the time that this rain takes to go away it doesn't just completely stop it however if you take a sunflower and actually give it to the terra terra bozo it will instantly change it to day you can do it by either right clicking it or throwing it at it it will consume it it will still be a bit sa sad but as you can see the rain is lightening up and now the terra terra bozo is all nice and happy again there we go we have our final enchantment finally finished now all we have to do is right click on this and then see did it do both it did end up doing both but as you can see that took a very long time and took 
a heck of a lot of mana as you can see here you don't just need this many spreaders but that's just how it makes it go faster as well as that you can use a spark to actually uh, put mana into this as well and a spark is actually faster but for now, guys, that is going to be everything when it comes to the natural apparatus inside of Batania. There are many, many things that are in this mod. We haven't covered everything in natural apparatus as some are requiring ingredients that we cannot currently get. But if this video helped you out in any way, shape or form, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And if you would like to know about more mystical items and trinkets inside of Batania, then click on one of the videos on screen now. There are many, many OP items in this game which are far cooler than what we've shown today. But until next time, guys, take care.